Good morning, Vietnam. What's up, hello, fell divers? How are you doing this lovely Thursday? How are you tanking the patches? We're going to discuss what actually the patches did to the armor, what's the armor fix, and how to play the game effectively. Now we can actually have fun. Honestly, start starting from the patch and the Discord and the Reddit community, this patch may have been the first one that I've seen it has divided a community into us versus them this fast. The game has been out for two weeks. The first patch dropped. People went from like, you know, camaraderie, friendship, blah, 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 the whole shit to absolutely fucking hating each other, like being at each other's throats. On one side, we have people who just, you know, Google meta strats and try to run those without actually trying out all the other guns. And when those, you know, guns, the meta gets nerfed, supposedly, they get up in arms, they get pissed, they believe the game is unplayable. Opposing them, on the other side, you have the, you know, the Helldivers 1 elitist who played the first game, which was apparently known for its brutality, especially on higher tier missions like 7, 8 or 9. And they believe that the state of the game right now is too easy. They feel like the 7, 8 or 9 should be exclusively for the sweatiest of the sweaty players. <laughs> That it should be for, you know, running with your squad, making strategies like, you know, the whole science behind it. I'm kind of in the middle. Since it's a massive game, it outperformed its own expectations by like a 10x margin, saying that the CEO himself admitted he expected maybe, I don't know, 20, 25,000 people. He got like a, almost a million of them playing the game. I feel that with that level of randomness, since you have a lot of random players, matching up you not everyone is going to have three friends to join a squad i have people who are not into hell divers no matter how good it is they just it's not their style of game and be that as it may as much as i try to persuade them they're not getting it so i have two friends who play it i don't have three for example and the two friends i have also have jobs and they are not online all the time when i am you, know, you can't always link up with your homies every single night when you're a grown-ass man to play the game sometimes you gotta find randoms to jump in and as good as randoms are like this game has some of the best sort of squad mechanics where people actually collaborate with each other which is surprising most people in other games such as the finals or pretty much any other has a team-based system with multiple players it's always that one guy that goes you know his own separate way and then he just fucks up the rest of the team this game actually has a like camaraderie even if people don't have a mic the ping system people really respect it which is nice but you still can have that pre-planned level of strategy with a bunch of randoms you just dropped in. Especially if you're going the SOS route, which is my preferred method of finding quick games. I just smack R, it finds the game, I hop in, support, we roll, that's it. So, you know, I feel like the game should be a bit more difficult, but not too difficult. Obviously, you can't run <clears throat> the three highest missions solo that's just stupid you're not supposed to be a one-man army you should if you want to be a one-man army go play warframe or destiny like this isn't the that type of game that type of experience but anyway back to the topic at hand how to actually circumvent the meta nerfs if you are a meta chaser is basically just try other guns first thing the breaker let's talk about the breaker the breaker is still the strongest gun band for band compared to all the other ones. I tried each of them on a tier 8 mission. Honestly, in the video, I'm running tier 3 because that's the video I have downloaded from my stream. If you're interested in seeing me and my homies get absolutely squashed in higher tier missions and trying other guns and loadouts, hop in the stream. I'll drop a link down below. Anyways, it's still the best gun band for band in terms of damage, in terms of fire rate. It just does, it clears hordes of enemies very quickly. It melts the Hive Guards, Brute Commanders. It just, just shreds through them. Same goes with the Berserkers from the Automatons and the uh, Devastators. It just fucking melts them. The only difference that they actually made to the gun is that it has a spread now. Like, they reduced the accuracy and gave it spread because before the patch, you could effectively snipe someone from 200 meters away with a shotgun. Which made it basically more viable than any other gun like why would you use a sniper rifle that has 190 damage when you can use a shotgun with 330 they can still snipe at the same distance it doesn't make sense 
So it's really not like it's still the best crowd control gun, like the primary you can find in game. I personally prefer the second, the green marksman rifle or the liberator penetrator, because you know I'm not a fan of you know running meta loadouts. I'm anti meta, I guess. I like you know make random shit viable in any game, regardless if hell divers or league or anything. Like it's always, it's always like that. But it's still like if you were thinking that the breaker's useless, you're just not aiming right because it's still the best gun. You just have to get up close and personal because it's a shotgun now. Now, second railgun is also not nerfed in any way that makes it unusable. The only thing you actually have to do with the railgun now as well is just use it in the unsafe so you can overcharge it without blowing up yourself and to aim. Basically, if you shoot the face of a Bile Titan on 7 or 8 difficulty while it's spewing, it sounds, it sounds difficult because like while it's vomiting, you have to shoot it in the face. If you nail it in the fucking mouth, the second it opens it and starts vomiting, it's an insta-kill. Like, on my mama, I guarantee it. If you shoot it in the fucking head while it's throwing up, it's an insta-kill. It'll explode the head, it's, it's gone. And the shield generator, it takes a 40% more to recharge, which isn't really that big of a nerf. Because unless you're planning to face tank a lot of damage, you're not, it's not going to deplete that fast. The entire point of the game is that you're not supposed to be stationary, you're not supposed to stand and shoot while you're getting ganged or shot at by bugs and robots. So, in terms of the meta, it's just slightly altered, not really nerfed. The alternatives for high-tier missions, especially since people seem to really be upset about the chargers, is use a spear. Like, people have been sleeping on the spear and it's criminally underrated. Yes, I agree. Like, I'm a spear purist. I like I love that rocket launcher, despite it being absolute dog shit to lock on. Like, honestly, it, it fucking has cataracts. It can't lock on to fucking shit. But when it does, it takes one rocket to ice anything. Like, God in heaven himself ordained this weapon to humanity. Level 8 Annihilator tanks, gone. Uh, Hulkbuster's gone, Charger's gone, Biotator's gone, your mother gone. Like, it doesn't matter. Once you actually lock on, it, it works. It's like, it takes one shot. You have five or, I don't know, fucking five, five or six of them. Like, one in the chamber and, like, and five on your back. You can recharge the pack with uh, supplies and ammo drops. So, it's very viable. The only problem with it is you actually have to have nerves of steel. Because it takes a while to lock on, so you really have to like play the who has bigger balls, you or the enemy. Because if you get caught, they will charge you, they will shoot at you. You gotta stand, like you gotta stay, you know. You gotta clutch up, you gotta stand still, you gotta let the lock on do its job and not you know run away unless you unless you absolutely have to. <clears throat> but otherwise, seriously, try the spear, it's it's slapped on criminally. Because it does, it does sh one shot everything. As long as like the only exception it has to one shotting is if you hit a charger from like a bullshit angle, and it might, but it's gonna take off like a chunk of its back, and it might not die instantly, but it will die in a couple seconds anyway. Or you'll open in the very least, you'll open a hole for your enemies to drop a couple breaker shots or whatever shots they have into the flesh and not the and not the armor. So it's a very viable option. Second one is like the expendable anti-tank. It sounds stupid. It's a very low tier, like low level support weapon, but cr criminally close range versus a charger at seven or eight. It, it kills it. Like if you shoot a bastard in the face from like two feet away, you might die, but you know, it's a sacrifice you gotta do. You'll take it out with you. Auto cannons, mm, she, you know, it's, it's up to choice. I'm not a big fan. I prefer the spear because I like to get my job one and done. But people have been, you know, liking the auto cannon. They've been liking the flamethrower has been buffed 50%. So you can slow roast a charger, which might not be as easy because two things. First, you are not immune to fire damage anymore. They anymore they fix that uh, they fix that issue. So if you light a bug on fire like the Pouncer or the Hunter and it jumps on you, it's going to light you on fire too and you're going to die very quickly. Plus, if you try to roast a Charger alive, it's going to take you at least like 
60 seconds to cook it. And you have a lot of other bugs just trying to, you know, climb up your ass and kill you. So it's, if you're trying to run solo, it's like dispel the idea out of your head of anything other than the high explosives. Now, when we're talking about high explosives, people have been bitching endlessly about, about stratagems being like useless. They have low cooldowns, blah, blah, blah. And again, there's the, part, the only issue with that is that you're using only two fucking strategies. Like the people that I've seen, and I've been playing, I'm level 37. I've been known lifing this for like a week and a half straight. I've been playing this religiously. I mean, so the point is people either run 500 kg bombs or they run fucking orbital rail. And maybe they run, I don't know, I can't remember. I think it's like either one of the 380 millimeter barrage or the uh, eagle one of the eagles <laughs> which again they didn't put 20 different fucking stratagems for you to use only three and then bitch about them being useless bile titans and chargers can and will be killed by a walking barrage if by some ordinance of god the walking barrage actually walks in the right direction because i don't know why the fuck they something just leave the, the guy just fires them randomly if you shoot it and it goes into the right direction it should take maybe one or two shots from the walking orbital barrage to kill a bile titan and it fires for quite a quite a long while 380 millimeter artillery also does great now they've kind of reduced the spread increased the, the duration so it also kills chargers and bile titans pretty easily use the ems like that's my personal like, ems mortar turret or ems orbital strike strike like EMS mortar turret and the orbital strike EMS or just I prefer the mortar because it actually shoots longer than just once it's a godsend against like I've been using it since maybe like five or six level missions on a lot of shit and it's just so useful how it slows down the bile titans the charge like it slows down everything they can't charge because they're sort of like slowed stunned and first, it gives you a chance to shoot them with the railgun much easier without wasting so much bullets. <clears throat> it helps you lock on with the spear. It helps you shoot them with the auto cannon with the recoilless, <clears throat> recoilless rifle. And just one second, I gotta go drink some water. It helps you shoot them with the recoilless rifle and all of the other things that you might have. Or in the, in the very least, it helps you rotate, leave the area, do the, do the quick objective or whatever you might have. Or just run away. Because it slows them down. Like, sometimes you don't have to fight. Sometimes you just have to run out of aggro range. And you're good. And now people have also been crying like, oh, they're going to destroy the, like, the charge, the turret. If you put the mortar next to you and not in front of the enemy, like you're not throwing the, you're not throwing the sentry towards the enemy. You're throwing it next to you, especially if it's a long range mortar. Because that way you can protect it from getting jumped on by the bugs. Because the bugs will. Every time, and this is something that people need to pay attention to, the bugs will first lock on to the sentries, take them out, then take you out. It's always like the charges will always first target the sentries, which again might be a good strategy because if you're running for your life against the multiple charges, drop a sentry and drop a sentry in between you and the bugs. Sort of like a, how you're running from a, from a polar bear if you take off your clothes and you drop them like a hat or a gloves, the bear will stop to sniff them in that same way. The chargers and the other bugs will automatically go to fuck up the sentry while you have time to run away. It's tried and tested. Trust me, it works. For the for the automatons, it's a bit different, but you know they're kind of forgotten because right now everybody's pissed off about the chargers. But the automatons will also lock in on the sentries first and then on the hell divers. So use it wisely. Drop it. Sometimes it's they can be the fucking most useless ones ever. You can just drop it to run away, and they have also have a. Eh, Pretty really decent cooldowns because like you don't really need them always unless you're in one position for a longer period of time. Also, incendiary mines since the the fire damage has been also buffed along with the flamethrower, and the anti personnel mines really come in clutch when it comes to obliterating and securing an area. And I've not seen a lot of people use them. I guess people are afraid that the that the other players are gonna step on them. But honestly, one guy dying getting revived. Getting the mission objective, it's it's a trade-off that's worth it. Plus, Helldivers are gonna notice them because the 
mines glow red and they beep, so you're not gonna miss him. You have to be fucking really blind to not notice him. So just use the mines, trust me. Basically, the EMS like is your friend. I haven't tried the shield since bugs go through the orbital shield, like the, the shield sentry, they go through it, so it doesn't matter. But oh yeah, I almost forgot my bad. The the arc cannon people are using that a lot of more as well, but the Tesla the Tesla sent you know, the Tesla sentry is also pretty effective because it will chain lighting the small bugs like and when i say small i mean everything that's not a charger is small like the root commander might be you know considered like a medium size but everything under a brute commander is getting one shot immediately especially because it chains like i've seen the brute commanders the little ones the, the gray ones one lightning bolt done the nursing biospheres done it's very <clears throat> It's very effective. Also, speaking of nursing bile titans, keep in mind that bile does damage other bugs. So if there's a charger next to bile, to nursing bile spewers or just bile spewers, kill the bile spewers. If there's more of them, like three, or two or three of them next to a charger, them exploding actually might kill the charger as well. It happened multiple times. It's you know it's effective. Like bile titans can also kill charges when they vomit anything in the area that the vomit hits. Is getting fucked, so you know if you might as well use the bugs against themselves. Now, so those are the sentries, those are the stratagems. What else? Oh yeah, the secondaries. The secondaries spear is good for taking out almost anything with armor, regardless of level. It will one shot ninety five percent of the times, unless you're on a weird angle. It might not kill the charger or the hulk immediately, but it will leave them to die in maybe a couple seconds. Annihilator tanks gone. Battle Titans, if you shoot them, just make sure to shoot them at the face. If it's a Battle Titan, that way the missile will kill them instantly because it'll blow off their head. Annihilator tanks, they get one tap by their shit, no problem. You gotta have a guy, or at least if, if you don't have the guy, you gotta be that guy and you gotta run the steward or the machine gun because people forget how necessary crowd control is because the bugs spawn a fuck ton. And since everybody's bitching about the bugs, especially the one little, the little white ones, which suck the most, Stuart is your best friend. Like you will literally not go wrong with bringing a Stuart, even though people be like, "Oh, it's a low tier gun, uh, level three, level four, You unlock that shit. Like shut the fuck up. There is no better. Like it has high precision. It has high damage. It has high. It's basically like a smaller, more portable machine gun. And it will get your ass out of a sticky situation when you're being hunted by 120 pouncers and whatever the fuck those white things are, the one that hit you with the slow. You will shred them. Like it's it's very good at uh, crowd control. It's gonna retaining the lines. You gotta have a guy that's gonna take care of the swarms. So between the flamethrower, the steward is your next best option for just taking care of the swarms. You can also rock the rover bot, like the the laser guy that flies around and shoots he's also good at stripping armor since the laser has been buffed it kind of sucks the laser still kind of ass even despite it being buffed the only the only actually effective way it's abused is if you take the the rover because it actually because it you know the bot locks on on his own so you don't have to aim and it's pretty good it does the job well so that's the guns. I think, you know, we covered everything. Basically, my advice is just try different guns. Just like, just because something is unlocked at level, I don't know, five does not mean it's not viable at level nine. You got to remember, like, everything has its purpose. Nothing is, nothing is shittier. The enemies don't, go str don't get stronger with level. They just get more numerous. The charger has the same amount of health on five than he, as he does on nine. The only difference being on nine, there's like seven of them. And on five, there's like one per game. While on nine, there's like fucking 10 of, 10 of them per square inch. But that's basically the point. Use different stratagems, orbital, bar walking barrage, 380 millimeter, EMS. Use cluster bombs to thin out the lines. The reason why a lot of you are dying to chargers is, is because you get caught on by the little bugs, slowed, and then you just can't fight back. It's easy to run a charger, but you cannot run 120 leapers. That's a different story. Now, onto the armor fixes. People are bitching that they get one shot, and that makes sense because 
Before the patch, the armors had all had armor stats of heavy armors, meaning that light armors had 150, medium armors had 150, and heavies had 150. And people ran light and medium because the speed and stamina regeneration were normal, like they were as they were supposed to be on light and medium armors, but they had heavy armor stats, which made you basically fast and unkillable. Now they fixed that, so light light armors give you 50 light, uh, armor stats, making you practically a walking piece of paper. You get obliterated immediately. Medium armors have 100. They're not much better. If you're looking to have an armor that's kind of pre, uh, pre-patch pre feeling where you can run, you can take damage without being killed in two or three. People are, are complaining like, oh, and get killed in two or three hits because you were, you know, if I'm, if I'm on medium, if I run a light armor, I get killed in like one hit. It sucks. This game sucks. You know, I'm going to want my money back, all that shit. The four armors that you get at the start of the game, the B1 tacticals, they have extra padding as their passive, meaning you get a, a bit more bonus armor. They have 150 armor stats, which is equivalent to like most heavy armors. Some heavies have 200, some 150. But B, the medium B1 tactical has 150 armor. It has the speed and stamina regeneration of an average medium armor. So you will be able to run. You will be fast enough to run away. You will have, you know, the stamina regeneration that you're used to if you're a medium armor player. And you will have enough armor to actually tank four or five hits from less of enemies, three or four from slightly bigger ones without getting absolutely boned. That's basically the, the game hasn't changed all that much. Now onto the more dramatic matters is, you know, I've never seen a community that divided between the you know get good maniacs and the I love meta maniac. Like it's they're both two sides of the same coin, and they both equally suck. The meta guys, I can't fault them too much. They're just you know they're brainwashed by the current gaming status because in the past let's say let's say in the past five to seven years every single game has been hysterically dominated by two things and that's monetization and the meta one indicative of the other because if you have monetization if you have cool shit you want to win if you have a battle pass and you don't have the money to fork it over obviously i'm not gonna pay 40 bucks on a battle pass go fuck yourself i'm looking at the triple a titles you gotta get good to level up so the way you do is you follow the meta, you use the meta to be as good as possible to rack up as many points, coins, grinds, whatever the fuck you need to get the item you want. Like, especially for Warframe, like you need meta to grind, because honestly, if you're not running the meta strat on Warframe, you're going to spend down fucking four hours on a mission that you could run with the meta frames in maybe 40 minutes. That's a problem. So... That mentality has seeped into every single game, and people want a light experience, a fun experience, they want to feel like gods for half the effort. Obviously, that's why they have the twisted you know, mentality of, oh, there's no meta, the game sucks. There is meta, every gun is meta. That's the point, like, every gun is meta, because every gun is, has its purpose. You're not a one-man army, this is a one-man army type of game, you can't be a solo player. I mean, you can, but then you go to level 5 and be a, so you can be a level 9 solo player because it's not designed for a level 9 solo experience. And on the other hand, we have the, you know, the elitist uh, get good. I played a uh, Helldivers 1 game and I've sweated like a dog. Bro, you, like, for those people, you played a game that had five to, to 15,000 players at their best moment. This current game has <clears throat> almost a million of us. You are a minority in your own game. This isn't 10 years ago. This isn't the community. It's not the same game. Yes, the only thing this, that's the same about Helldivers 2 and Helldivers 1 is that the lore of the universe in which the game takes place is a continuation, like from the se- from the first game into the second. So the point is, you aren't owed shit. No titles, no recognition, no claps on the back, no nothing. Just because you played the first good one, there's a much larger, much different, much broader player base, which are all like this. People people I've seen a lot of people on Reddit and Discord spam the 
a game for no one, a game for everyone is a game for no one, which the dev said, obviously, which the CEO, I think, actually said. And okay, I agree with that. A game for everyone is a game for no one. But the problem is, this isn't, there's not everyone. You don't have everyone. You have one million people that this game is for. The majority of the player base that hasn't heard of Helldivers 1 because it was a PS, what, PS3 game only like 10 years ago. Most people didn't give a shit because it's a small game. This game attracted its intended audience. We are the intended audience. And the problem is that the intended audience now went from 10,000 to 750,000, maybe even more. And that level of success is something that kind of, you know, it shakes the very vision of the development team itself. And you got to understand that they now have to accommodate the, let's say, preferences, the desires, or at least the playability of the game towards a much larger audience with a much more variety in opinions. And obviously, if they are in, if they want, as any you know, as any studio wants to make money, and still provide their vision, they gotta you know they gotta compromise. You can't just alienate half your player base by saying this is a game for you know, not for everybody because we are the intended player base. There, there's a lot of people that don't play. Like one million player, one million players out of a eight billion world isn't a lot, but it's still a lot more than expected. And we are the, there's other people who don't play Helldivers that will never play Helldivers either because they don't like it, either be, or they're a bug supporter, or they're a fucking anti liberal commie, or they're just, you know, a sketchy of the anti virus. Whatever the reason are, there's a lot of people that won't play the game, but the game attracted the people it will. So the both sides are, you know, in very wrong. And obviously, the Arrowhead CEO has come out. I've personally seen the comment of the dude on Reddit like maybe a couple hours ago, saying that they are going to address the moderators and the developer that, you know, haunted and trolled and insulted the community, and that they're going to address that issue. They're going to, you know, have a talk as a team, blah, 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 the whole, you know, the whole shebang, the whole nine yards, because you you just can't do it. They want the game to survive. They want the game to survive. They want the game to try he said like they're looking forward to always listening to the community, always improving, always seeing what works and what doesn't. This is the first patch. The game is still new. And he's right. This is the first patch in a two week old game. And some people, a lot of people, mainly the meta people have been really up in arms about this game dying, despite it being the first patch in a two week old game. As if hot fixes, as if reverting the changes doesn't exist, which it does. So if you, you know, refund the game just because a patch is shit, you're either playing the game wrong or you just wasted forty bucks. Because you know, if you don't like the game at the moment, you know, just take a you know, two or three days break, see where it goes. Because they're dropping something big. Like between you and me, honestly, this might be a little inside. Super Earth secret, but I've they've just dropped inside the game. There's like a little warning, like a little notification that the Liberty, I don't know what the fuck it's called, like the Liberty Factory that that builds stuff, actually has, you know, dropping something that the players should check out their manuals for usage of I don't know what the fuck like machinery. So apparently they're gonna drop like I don't know what it is. I forgot because I'm senile. But basically, they dropped the notification that they're dropping something big. So apparently, we're going to get a new arsenal, which they have been teasing quite a lot. And the idea of them actually nerfing, quote unquote, nerfing, just keep that under quotes because nothing was really nerfed. The fact of them nerfing uh, weapons, so to say, or at least buffing the amount of bugs and robots that spawn, might be so the stuff they drop soon. Uh, looks more powerful in comparison. Like your guns feel slower, they feel kind of weaker, but then they're gonna drop the mix. And honestly, if you can level, if you can level nine solo with a fucking breaker, then why would you need a mech? Why would you need a vehicle? Like if you can solo a level eight or nine mission, that's not the point. But if you can't, and then suddenly they drop max, and max are fucking strong as hell. The mechs are gonna feel stronger. It's now like okay, I can you know solo level nine with a mech or with a you know with a vehicle. 
So that's the point. Obviously, they have to make uh, certain enemies stronger or at least certain gun- guns seem weaker because more guns and more what, things that they're going to drop into the game, they're, they would feel very useless if the current loadout is too powerful. You got to understand me, because like, if I make a car and that car has everything from the aesthetics to the performance to the, if it's the pinnacle of car design and car manufacturing, is it, like, who else, and I, like, how, I, I can't top that. If it has the amazing price and everything, if it's basically the perfect vehicle for the perfect price, then how, what's the point of me dropping a second car after it? Now people are going to be like, okay, why did you drop the supercar 2.0 if the supercar 2.0 1.0 is already super? Like, there's no point to it. Like, why would you drop something that's already perfect? <clears throat> And it's already perfected. Same goes like if you can just railgun everything, why would you need a to waste fifty thousand? I mean, okay, fine. People be like, it's for the fun, it's for this, for that. But honestly, I've seen this a lot in games where like they drop new stuff, but the meta is so strong that nobody actually picks up new stuff. Like you, you've seen it in games like uh, League of Legends, you've seen it in games like Finals, and a lot of other shooters. You have a meta, no matter what new shit you drop. Unless that new shit is absolutely overpowered, no one's going to pick it up because the metal is already doing what everybody wants it to do. It's a one-track mind kind of mentality. Like, if I have this, it serves its function that I want perfectly, and it's low cost, low effort, I'm not going to try to take something that's more costly and requires more effort to get the same result. So, obviously, they need to make the mechs viable. And making them overpowered just kills the game. Because if you had people running around in mechs just butchering the entire mission, just you know, as fucking the Bile Titans with a mech, it it's like it kills the immersion. You're not supposed like you're supposed to pray to God and just duck and dive while lasers whiz past your past your head. You're not supposed to get into a mech and become a dreadnought. Like this isn't Warhammer. So Keep in mind that there is a lot of reasons why they might have made the game feel, why they made you as the Helldiver, like the game feel kind of harder because the shit that they're going to drop in is, needs to feel strong. Because we were like, in the previous patch, we have already been pretty fucking, you know, strong. Honestly, you could run a two-man team on a level eight mission and complete all the objectives with maybe like five minutes extraction time to spare. That's, that's a bit too much. It's too easy. It's too easy. And it's not like too easy, it's just unfairly easy because you can still complete it. Like you need a four man squad. I mean, a four man squad to complete the level eight mission, which is completely fine. Yeah, you're going to struggle a bit, but it's not unplayable. But yeah, I think, I think I'm starting to you know, kind of backtrack my own points, which means that this video has been going on too long, anyways. So, well. So that would be all, honestly. I don't think I'll have to cover any more news. I just dropped onto this topic while it's hot with my two, you know, two cents a piece for, the, for everything going on, including the drama, and to offer you guys some very helpful solutions of weapon and armor variety. So keep in mind, use other weapons, pick a designated lane. You want to be the swarm guy, pick weapons that kill swarms. You want to be the boom guy, pick explosives. You want to be the fire guy, pick mines and flames. You want to be the fucking anti-tank, you got to pick the anti-tank. And B1 Tactical Armor is the best one for not getting completely shredded immediately. That's pretty much all that there is to it. Keep in mind, EMS is king. And have a beautiful day. What the fuck can I tell you? <laughs> drop, drop a like, drop a subscribe if you want. Check out other content. I make, I make mostly playthroughs, not reviews. And, you know, say hi on the stream. You know, the more the merrier, I guess. That's all there is from me for this little rant and have a beautiful day and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.